graphic death scenes, a water skiing elephant, all of this and more in beautiful 2D. This is Movie Night. Hi, my name is Jonathan Paul and welcome to Movie Night, YouTube's number one interactive weekly movie review show, focusing mostly on DVD releases and classic box office bombs. Our first film tonight is the reportedly final installment in the Final Destination series. The movie is aptly titled The Final Destination. Released in August of last year, this disappointing third sequel to the fresh and original hit from 2000 somehow managed to gross over $180 million which, despite what those Hollywood execubots say, may yet result in another sequel. And that's the biggest problem I had with this film. No one asked for a sequel, let alone three of them. For those out of the loop, the plot of this movie, like all the films in the Final Destination series, revolves around a small group of teens and 20-somethings who die a gruesome death in the film's opening scene. Thanks to the lead protagonist's death-preventing premonition, however, none of the main characters die on that particular day. Lucky for us, they're slowly killed off one at a time for the remainder of the movie in bizarre and coincidental ways. It just so happens they're also killed off in the same order they would have died in the original accident. And awesome, that was a cool and original concept 10 years ago. Today, everyone in the audience knows what's going to happen, and even the red herrings are easy to spot from 10 shots away. Since everyone in the previous films are dead, we're given a fresh new cast of meatbags to watch die. None of them can act, and none of the female leads take their clothes off, so really, watching them get sucked into a swimming pool's drainage pipe is our only source of entertainment, from a movie that otherwise fails on every level. Except that of being a highbrow snuff film. Although I did catch this movie in Blu-ray, I sadly was unable to snag a 3D version of the movie. But I have to assume that such a gimmick would only serve to assist the movie's shock and scare value, and not much else. Luckily though, at an incredibly short 82 minutes in length, this mindless death fest of bad acting and horrible dialogue is over before you really have time to process just how really bad it is. The one positive thing I can say about this movie is that the special effects and kill scenes are, as always, a morbidly delightful treat to watch. But that's what I thought about The Final Destination. Let's see what you guys had to say in some YouTube comments. Sammy Slam Dunk wrote, the worst out of the series. I feel like I was watching something trying to be a Final Destination movie, but failed. Four out of 10. Anime Admirer 22 wrote, Fairly good, but nothing special. The sequels continue to degrade the original, which probably couldn't have done much to make itself better. The kids practically kill themselves now. A few of you, apparently so disillusioned by the magic of three dimensions, foolishly scored this movie a perfect 10 out of 10. Now, while everyone is certainly entitled to their own opinion, I can't help but wonder, what the hell were you thinking? So just a bit of warning, those undeservedly high scores you're about to see on the rate of Matic in a second, uh, they came from people who wouldn't know a good movie if it bit them on the ass. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and fire up the rate of Matic to see how The Final Destination did. Alright, a 2-5 split. And you know what I thought of the movie? Although the death scenes were entertaining, really the only redeemable part of the movie, uh, none of them felt new or original, just like the old movies. But luckily, the movie only wasted about 82 minutes of my life, so it got spared from the very lowest rung on the rate of I give it a crappy. You guys, as I mentioned, were a little bit more forgiving with this film, praising the dark humor and the special effects, scoring it a collective 5 out of 10. Moving forward, let's take a look at our next film tonight, Honky Tonk Freeway. Released in the summer of 1981 with a budget of $24 million, this movie at the time was the most expensive comedy film ever made. And when you have to paint the entire town of Montdora, Florida pink, and teach an elephant how to water ski, you know you're going to be breaking the bank. Told in interwoven narratives that feel like an epic episode of Seinfeld more than a movie, Honky Tonk Freeway is a story of a small town in Florida called Ticklaw, which is about to lose its tourism business thanks to a new highway that's completely bypassing the town. In an effort to make the city relevant again, the town mayor, played brilliantly by veteran actor Willem Devane, decides to paint the town pink, import wild African animals for a new safari zoo, and somehow teach an elephant to water ski so that they can be put back on the map. Long before they were famous, stars Beverly D'Angelo and Daniel Stern round out the immense supporting cast, all playing eccentric characters on their way to southern Florida for one reason or another. It feels like a poor man's version of Cannibal Run or Rat Race in many of the scenes. And although you can see the final act coming from the first shot of the movie, the juiciest parts of this film are really in finding out about these characters and how they're going to end up getting from point A to point B. Although nearly 30 years old, much of the crude and situational comedy here still holds up today, and the movie does feel like a 108-minute train wreck, you can't help but chuckle to yourself as you enjoy the ride. 
Without question, the final climactic highway crash sequence is one of the more memorable and epic scenes in comedy history. A guilty pleasure for sure, but Honky Tonk Freeway is most certainly a pleasure to watch. Now, not many of you have actually seen this film. In fact, only one person had seen the film and commented on last week's video. And here's what they had to say. S13AR10A fan wrote, Honky Tonk Freeway, I really don't get this movie. 4 out of 10. Luckily, however, more of you did vote on the movie, so let's take a look now at how Honky Tonk Freeway did on the rate matic Alright, I scored at a 5, an alright movie. You guys scored a little lower at the meh level. But um, overall, I'd say a pretty fair score, considering this is a 30-year-old box office bomb. Moving forward now, let's take a look at some of your tweet critiques for this week in cinema. DJ Danvey wrote, Young Victoria, don't expect action. Decent drama with bits of comedy here and there. Cast is great, and main lovers are okay. 8 out of 10. T. Mariucci tweeted, Youth in Revolt, good movie if you just wanted to laugh your ass off. I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Fat Squabbit tweeted, Daybreakers, was not expecting too much out of this film, but it was surprisingly good, the story was decent, and the acting was okay. 6 out of 10. Remember, if you've recently seen a movie in theaters, tweet about it with the JPMN hashtag and get it featured on an upcoming episode of Movie Night. Well, that's all for this week's episode. Let's take a look forward at the movies we'll be watching for next episode. The Hurt Locker is an American war thriller that you might have missed when it was released last summer, but it received critical reviews and is new on DVD this week. It Might Get Loud is a documentary about legendary guitarist Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin, The Edge from U2, and Jack White of The White Stripes, who all come together for one night only to discuss their careers, their playing styles, and to jam a little bit. It's new on DVD from last month, and it's an interesting and intimate look into rock history. Well, that's it for this episode. I'll see you next Wednesday on Movie Night. Until then, I hope you get a chance to check out both of these films. And once again, my name is Jonathan Paula. Thanks for joining me, and have a good night.